Hey there, this is Mr. H. This is one of my videos in my six step series. This one has to do with rotational dynamics. Enjoy. Before we get started, you're going to want to be very familiar with Newton's second law, F net equals M times A. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at its rotational analog, net torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Just as a net force is needed to accelerate an object, a net torque is necessary to angularly accelerate a rotating object. It will also be good if you are familiar with the common moments of inertia and their equations. If not, take a screenshot of this image as a reference. Also, we're going to be using these six steps right here, so we're going to take those with us where we go. Alright, let's do our first problem. At the playground, a person applies a 100 newton frictional force tangent to a giant hoop of 1.5 meter radius, causing it to angularly accelerate at pi over 2 radians per second square. Assuming no internal friction, what must be the mass of the hoop? Step 1 is to read and understand that problem. They're asking for mass, so we're going to write a symbol for mass and the question mark. They also gave us some other relevant information, so we're going to write that down too. Step two is to draw a picture, so go ahead and draw a hoop with a person in it. Step three is to draw a force diagram. Now when we're dealing with rotational dynamics, it's important to draw the force vectors where they are acting. So in this case, it's acting at the edge, so we're going to draw the frictional force at the edge of this hoop and we're going to label it static friction at a distance r. Step four is to analyze this diagram. Now there was only one force that we put on our diagram, so there's not much analysis. It's just net torque equals the product r times fs for that one applied torque. So step four is kind of done. Step five is to apply laws that are always true that are related. Now in this case, we're dealing with a net torque equation already, so the Newton's second law for rotational dynamics, net torque equals I alpha, is definitely related. So we're going to put that in our list too. Step six, solve. What are we solving for? Mass. In these two equations, do you see where mass might be? You got it right. It's stuck in that letter I for rotational inertia. Um, this is a hoop, so it's going to have a moment of inertia of mr squared, so that's where the m is going to be. All right, so let's see what we can do to solve for m. All right, we've got net torque equals something and net torque equals something else, so why don't we use substitution um, and set those two things equal? And then we're going to also substitute for moment of inertia of a hoop, mr squared. And now we're getting somewhere. We just have to rewrite this for m, so divide by r squared alpha. And then we can plug in our values, and we're done. 40 kilogram hoop. All right, let's take a look at another example. An 8 kilogram rotor disc of radius 0.25 meters is spinning. The brake pads apply a frictional force of 0.2 meters from the axis of rotation, causing an angular acceleration of negative pi radians per second squared. Determine the frictional force applied by the brake pads. So step one is to understand the question. They're asking for a frictional force, so we write F equals question mark. Step two, draw a picture. So draw a rotor with pads. Step three, free body diagram. Again, Make sure to draw your forces from the place that they're applied. Don't just draw a dot anywhere. In this case, the brake pads are 0.2 meters away, so we're going to start our friction vector at a radius of 0.2, not all the way to the edge. Step four is to analyze the diagram to create equations. In our diagram, we have a torque that's applied at a radius of RB for our brakes. So we're going to say the net torque is equal to RB times friction kinetic. There are no other torques, so we don't have to have anything else in this expression. Step five is to apply laws and formulas that are always true. 
let's go over here to the side here. We'll rewrite our first equation. And since we have a net torque equation, then Newton's second law for rotation applies. So we're also going to add net torque equals I alpha, and that's step five. Step six is to solve for the unknown. The unknown was friction. There it is. Um, again, we're going to substitute since we got two net torque equations. We'll um, rewrite that as RB times FK equals I alpha. And we're solving for FK, so divide by RB. And I for a disk is one half mr squared. So we're going to substitute that letter I with one half mr squared. And then we're going to substitute and solve. We get about negative five fourths pi newtons. All right, let's try one with no numbers, only symbols. Mass M1 hangs over a pulley of radius R and mass M2, as shown in the figure. Derive an expression for the angular acceleration of the pulley in terms of constants R, G, M1, and M2. So step one is to read and understand the question. They're asking to solve for angular acceleration. So a symbol would be alpha with a question mark. Step two is to draw a picture, but they gave us a figure so we don't have to draw one. Step three is to draw force diagrams. Um, there's two different objects. We've got to be careful here. We'll separate them and we'll draw diagrams for each. We'll draw a diagram for the box. The box doesn't rotate, so that'll just be like a, a regular free body diagram, but the pulley will rotate, so we'll have to do it, a rotational uh, torque analysis of that. So let's, um, let's do steps three and four for each together. So let's start with the block. The block is going to have invisible gravity down, M1G. And then it's also got this contact point from a string pulling up, so we'll have tension up. And then we'll add all those forces to get a net force expression. I'm going to call down positive because that's the way it's going to accelerate. It's not going to start climbing up. Um, so the expression would be M1G minus T, down minus up. So that's, that's done. That's steps three and four for the block. Now let's look at the pulley. Now, does it have any torques applied to it? Yeah, right there there's tension. So tension is going to be a force acting right there at the edge. And that's going to have a torque of R times T. There's no other applied torques, so we can be done with our net torque equation. Uh, net torque equals R times T. Step five is to apply laws that are applicable. So in both cases, we wrote either a net force or a net torque expression. So Newton's second law for rotation will be applicable to the pulley, and just Newton's second law in general form is going to be applicable to the block. So we're going to go ahead and add the um, inertia term and the acceleration term like F equals MA or torque equals I alpha to both of those expressions. And now we're ready for step six. Step six for this one, it's a system of two equations and we've got a lot of substitution so uh, this could get messy but uh, try to follow along. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of those T's by substituting an expression for T into the first expression. And then we get this line, R M1G minus R M1A equals I times alpha. Um, the next thing we want to do is we kind of want to group like terms. Um, so there's acceleration terms here, so let's put them on the same side. And then here's where we got to be careful. This I is moment of inertia of a disk, so let's put in the formula for a disk, one-half m2 r squared. And then, um, I don't want an a and an alpha, I just want an alpha. Luckily, a equals r times alpha, so I can just substitute r alpha right there. Now look at all these r's. Don't need that many r's. If there's an r in every term, we can divide by r for everything and we get this nice simple line and it's starting to look like alpha is attainable let's just group these other two terms and then we get this expression all you gotta do is divide now m1g minus the product of r times m1 plus 
one half m2 in parentheses. All right, let's see if you can do one on your own. This is a basketball player spinning a basketball on their fingertips. And we're going to act like we know that the frictional force applied by their fingertips happens on average a distance of five millimeters from the axis of rotation. It has an angular acceleration rate of a negative 0.1 radians per second squared and the dimensions of the ball are given as 0.12 meters for radius and 0.5 kilograms for mass. Treat the ball as a hollow sphere, pause the video, give it a try, and then click play when you're ready to check. Hopefully you got this. Um, step one, you would have had the question was friction equals question mark. Step two, there was a picture. Step three, your diagram is kind of tiny there. It's uh, going to give you the expression R times F equals net torque there. And then you apply Newton's second law and substitute and solve. Of course, we can't end there. We got to do a graph problem. A hoop and a solid ball, each of mass 1 kilogram and radius 1 meter, undergo net torques of 1 newton meter each. Um, sketch a graph showing the angular velocity versus time for both the hoop and the ball. Okay, with graphs, one of the first things you always have to do is to ask yourself, does it mean something if I divide these axes? Omega divided by t, what is that? The slope would be acceleration, angular acceleration in this case. So if slope is angular acceleration, they're really just asking me for what's the angular acceleration for a hoop and what's the angular acceleration for a solid sphere given a net torque of one newton meter. And if you recall Newton's second law, net torque equals I alpha and you rewrite that for alpha, you're going to get torque divided by I. And for a hoop, if you plug in the moment of inertia, mr squared, you'll end up getting a slope of 1, and for a solid sphere, you will end up getting a slope of 5 over 2, which is 2.5. And, and there you have it. Now we can be done.